Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be working on a easy front-end eval question. If you don't know what front-end eval is, it is a platform with free exercises for you to practice modern front-end development interviews. The question that we're going to be tackling is this array.prototype.map. And if you read the prompt, it says, map is a function of the JavaScript array prototype that can be provided a callback, which will be called for every element in the array. Return value will be a new array containing the original elements after they have been passed through the callback. For example, function double x, which is a multiplier of two, pass in my array, and then you take mapped array equals my array dot map, and then double it, and then one, two, three, four, five ends up being two, four, six, eight, ten. You should implement your own version of map, which can be pressed, not pressed past an array and a callback and will return a new array with the callback run against every element. For example, if we create a function called map and we create a new variable called mapped array and we do the x and x times two, then it'll return two, four, six, eight, ten. So let's get this started. Before I start on this, I want to kind of go a little bit above and beyond of just rather than solving this question right away, maybe someone that is a little bit newer to JavaScript doesn't really understand how the for each works versus the map. So I kind of want to go through some like layers and layers of how the mapping is more unique and more efficient, I guess, but not really. Like what what is really important here is that map and for each can serve two different purposes. And you could replicate a map function using for each. And that's probably what we're going to be doing. But I just kind of want to dig in a little bit deeper than rather than just assuming that everyone knows everything. So let's go into a JavaScript REPL here. And you can create your own JavaScript REPL going on REPLIT.com. So before I start, I kind of want to go over the for each and when is a good time to use a for each versus a map function. And then we'll come up with our own version of map. So Say you have an array, that's one, two, three, four. And in this case, if we use a for each number, and maybe we just want to see what is the value of each element times by two. So we could say um, uh, console.log number times two. And when we run it, We'll say two, four, six, eight. And say you want to store those new values, right? Two, four, six, eight somewhere. You can't actually do this. Like new array equals array dot for each and say return number times two. And let's see what it, the new array is. You'll see that it's undefined here, right? And that's because for each doesn't have any concept of returning anything. If you want to use a for each to generate a new array, specifically a new array that times by two, what you have to do is you have to say const new array equals an empty array. And here we're going to say new array dot push the number. And then we'll run that. And it will be one, two, three, four. That's because I didn't multiply it by two. So let's multiply it by two. And it'll be two, four, six, eight. So you see that with for each, you can't set it equal to a variable. It only is good for performing actions. In our case, we were doing a console.log, and now we're doing a new array.push. Then we do number times two. So assuming that we know how for each works, how does a map function work, right? So we'll say array or new mapped array equals array dot map number. And here we'll just return the number times two. And now let's see what the new mapped array is. Mapped array, say new mapped array here. Oops. We'll say new array. Maybe just put it for each just to make it more clear. Get rid of that. Save it and then run. So we see that the new array with using the for each does two, four, six, eight because we are pushing it. So 
But in the new mapped array, what we're doing is we're doing an array.map, which looks very similar to array.foreach here. But instead of pushing like we did in the array.foreach, a map gives us the ability to return a new array and set that value in a and set those values into a variable. And in this case, it's a new mapped array. So as you can tell, like if we're going to create our own mapping function, there must be something that is kind of similar to using like a for each or for loop to kind of create that process, right? And you'll notice one thing that it also specifies is that we need to kind of come up with our own callback, right? So maybe we could create our own function here called function of map. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do something along the lines of like an array dot for each and then kind of figure out what we and figure out what we need to do from there. So here, let's just say const uh, new array equals an empty array. And instead of using the map, we could just use the array dot for each, right? So we could do array dot for each. Then we'll say the array. And we'll return the callback of the actually it's not array, my bad. It's array for each and then maybe we'll just call this item and then we'll do return the callback of um right let's see it has to be a function it has to be able to take a function here so return the callback of the item i believe should work no, 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 no. I don't know what I'm thinking here. I apologize, everyone. So the callback is a function that needs to get called, essentially. So we need to do new array dot push callback of the item. Sweet. So in this case, the callback can be something like a uh, number times two, right? So here, let's just create a top function called function double. That takes a, a number and it'll return a number times two. So let's do double of two, or sorry, the number just to make sure it works, and then double of the number here. So let's save that and just make sure it works again. 2468, 2468, perfect. And let's just comment all of this stuff out just because this was just more for example purposes. And here, now that we've created a mapping function and our own mapping function, what we're doing here is we're just calling array dot for each. And for each array, there's a th variable called item. And now we're going to push the new array into or we're going to push the callback of the item. And we don't know what callback of the item is. Like callback is just any function. And in this case, we're going to pass in double. But we could also do a separate function called triple. And then we could just return a number times three. So here, we're going to push everything into the new array, whatever those values are. And lastly, what we need to do here, and this is very important, everyone, is that we need to return the new array because that's what a map function does, right? We, it always does whatever you need it to do based on the callback. And after that, it returns you the new array. So here, let's say map of this array here. And we'll just call maybe our triple or double function. And we'll set this equal to double map array. And let's console.log double map array. Run it. So double map array is 2468. Let's do const uh, triple map array equals map array of triple. And here, whoops, the triple map array. Run it. The triple map array does. 3, 6, 9, and 12. And we could even do something along the lines of not, uh, not named function call array. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we could take the map of the array. And then here, we'll just take 
the element. And maybe we'll do element times five, right? And maybe we'll call this actually element times four. And we'll call this quadruple array. Here, let's do that and run it. So you see that it works with our own personal function in the second argument, or we could call existing functions that already exist and just say double, triple, or use my little customized function. So essentially here, I wanted to show you how to come up with the solution because if you don't have a really strong grasp of how map works in general, then it's going to be really hard for you to solve this problem. But on top of that, I also wanted to show you how the for each works because I really think it's really important to know the difference of when to use one over the other. And generally, you know, like there really isn't a huge deal if you are going to do this pushing of some sort, but ideally you want to do the path that makes the most sense. And in this case, if you really need these new return values, generally want to lean towards using a map. But if you just need to perform some action and based on those actions, you do something else before each is acceptable. More often than not, as front end developers, we're always trying to return some modified data and then present it to our user. So having the map function really well understood is going to help you get better as a developer. And it's going to just make more sense to use map more often than not. So hopefully this lesson was not just about solving the problem, but really explaining to you how the map function works, how the for each function works, and how we can come up with our own version. With that being said, I hope this lesson was good. It was short and sweet and not too crazy, not one of those crazy CSS stuff like that. But I think although this is somewhat of a basic test, I, it really does test you on your fundamentals, specifically how to iterate over an array and when to use one over the other. So hopefully this was helpful again. I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later.